Thank you very much, and, and good morning, everybody. Uh, engineering, so, so this is a really broad subject, actually, and I think part of the issue is that people don't really understand what engineering is all about and the breadth of possibilities there could be, especially if you're starting out in a career in engineering. So first of all, obvious question, what's an engineer? Any thoughts? Anybody know what they think an engineer is? Maybe a few pictures just to help you along. Is that what you think an engineer might be, any of those things? Bit of a mechanic, bit of a fixer, hands-on, get a bit dirty. Yeah? A few nods in the audience. So perhaps that, that is a form of engineering. Technicians, mechanics, absolutely valuable bread and butter engineers. But there is so much more. And hopefully today, in the next 10 minutes or so, I can talk you through the breadth of possibilities there really are in engineering. So what qualifies me to do this? Well, I'm an engineer, um, degree educated. Uh, I was the head of engineering at Gatwick Airport until just recently when I moved on to uh, business transformation. And at Gatwick Airport, I was in charge of all of the infrastructure, all of the services, any of the mechanical items you saw, so the inter-terminal shuttle, if any of you have been to Gatwick and traveled between the north and south terminal. So literally, everything that you came into touch with at the airport, I was in charge of the teams that fixed that and, and kept that running. Prior to that, um, I actually did 20 years in the RAF. And uh, one of my last jobs in the RAF was as the head of engineering of RAF Waddington. So I had five fleets of spy planes, as you can see there, and I had a team of 1,000 uh, plus technicians that were fixing those. So, uh, so I have moved from several different um, fraternities of engineering, from aeronautical engineering into infrastructure and services engineering. Um, so so how, how can we do this? How can we explore the different types of engineering there might be? Well, have a think about your day so far. What do you think that you've done that's interacted with any form of anything that may have involved engineering at some point? Shout out, any, anything you think you might have done that actually interacted with some form of engineering at some stage? Any thoughts? Oh, you went in the type and, oh, okay, well, going on the engineering stands at the skill show is probably cheating a little bit, but it's a, it's a very, very good plan. I'm thinking way more domestic than that. So literally just your day getting here. Any thoughts? Go for it. Absolutely. So transportation, electrical works we've had there. Any other thoughts? What did, what did you do first thing? After you'd got up, what did you do? Everybody does it every single morning. We all need to eat, don't we? Did everyone have breakfast? I'm assuming you did. So, uh, so yeah, so if we have a think, you woke up, you probably had some form of alarm clock. You turned the lights on in your house. TV, radio, phone, we've all got a phone these days. We might have been on the computer already. All of that involves some form of engineering at some point. We had our breakfast. Now, how does breakfast involve engineering? Any thoughts? Okay. Processing, yeah, food processing, manufacturing, manufacturing of the cutlery, the plates, the crockery, absolutely everything involves some form of engineering. When you left your house or your flat, you know, for a start, there's, there's the house itself, all the construction and those elements, but also the travel, car, bike, walk, train, e everything involves some form of engineering. If you were wearing trainers and you were running, there was some form of engineering, manufacturing process that was involved in making those trainers elements of design, maybe computer-aided design in the design of those trainers. It literally is so far-reaching. So this building itself, just look around you, oh my goodness, it's a feat of engineering in itself. So I think we probably misunderstand sometimes, or perhaps just don't think widely enough about the sheer breadth of engineering. And if you're embarking on a career, then maybe you need to think a little bit harder about the type of engineering that could possibly excite or interest you. Because at the end of the day, I think everybody wants to get a job that makes them want to get out of bed in the morning because they're really interested and they're really motivated and that they're engaged in what they're doing and it gives them a buzz. And I feel sure that there are so many forms of engineering that you're bound to find one of them that will do just that for you. So I'll just talk through some of the different disciplines of engineering, the sort of more standard disciplines. 
Within these, there are very, very many nuances and different types and subsets, but I'll keep it at relatively high level. So mechanical engineering, that's the degree that I did. So I could say I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, but if you think back to the sort of career profile I talked about in the Air Force and then at the airport, there wasn't actually an awful lot of pure mechanical engineering in there. You know, I fundamentally believe that whatever engineering discipline you do, you could actually then, you know, change it. It's very transferable skills. The basic principles of engineering are exactly that. They're basic principles. So, so don't worry too much if you're worrying about, you know, do I go into this form of engineering or that form of engineering? You, you can change and morph as you go on and progress in your career. But from a, a mechanical perspective, we have there the, the mechatronics, train, rail, engines, and obviously automotive. And, and if you look around you, there, there are rich pickings of stands to go and have a look at, go and have a try, see what those things might be all about. And in any of these disciplines, you, you can choose to either be hands-on, you can be the fixer, you can be the guy that, that goes and really get, gets their hands dirty, or you can, as I have done, be a manager, an engineering manager. You know, I, I have never wielded a spanner in anger. Um, I guess I could. I don't particularly want to, but, uh, but I've never chosen to. I always sit on the management side, and it's more about understanding and being able to give direction and make decisions about faults and, and you know, technical questions. We then go on to aeronautical, and clearly I've spent a lot of time in this, having had 20-odd years in the RAF, um, so it's a real passion of mine. But there are loads and loads of different forms of aeronautical engineering, and you said you'd been on the Typhoon Simulator over there. You know, again, there are rich pickings, all sorts of companies are here showing their wares and, and hopefully enticing you into an understanding of what this might involve. Just, just a few ideas there. You, you, it goes all the way to space. And of course, coming up into the north of the country as we are, Rolls-Royce is one of the major, major companies we have, one of the major brands here in the UK that is such a rich history in aeronautical engineering. You know, they, they really are one of the world leaders in aero engine design and technology. So we are surrounded by really, really great stuff. Um, the space sector is a, a fantastic sector, and the UK really holds its own in the space sector. So there are very many exciting opportunities there as well. Um, Again, you can do the hands-on bit, you can be the guy fixing the aircraft, or you can step back, you can do the design, you can do the management. It really is something for everybody. Chemical engineering is probably more of an adjunct and something that people wouldn't necessarily associate with engineering. And by chemical engineering itself, um, again, you can either do a degree or maybe go straight in through an apprenticeship scheme. This is really the sort of stuff that, that keeps us ticking. It's the delivery of the gas, it's the delivery of the oil, it's the extraction of the gases and the oils, it's the great big processing plants and chemical plants, and the amount of engineering that goes in to keeping them safe, keeping them oper operable, is hugely significant. But once again, you can either do the hands-on stuff, or you can be doing the design and the management. It really is very, very much up to the particular individual, what sort of career profile you want to take, whether you want to get your hands dirty, or whether you want to do the strategic thinking piece. Manufacturing. Now, uh, again, this is, this is one of those uh, areas of engineering that I don't think very many people consider or think about. And just from the sort of reaction of the audience this morning, when I was asking you about, well, you know, what, what did you do today? What, what might have involved engineering? When I talked about breakfast, you know, there were quite a few blank looks thinking, the woman's clearly gone bonkers. What on earth has breakfast got to do with engineering? The food processing and the manufacturing plants are a massive piece of our engineering. We had a very, very big footprint of manufacturing plants. Lots of major companies, Nestle, Mars, etc., within the UK. A lot of them are leaving the UK now because they're not finding the skills bases. You know, we need to stop this. We need to get people involved because there are so many opportunities and there are so many gaps in the market in terms of people coming into these sectors that it's almost a travesty that you know, we've got Young, young kids and students looking for jobs, and we just haven't quite managed to get them in the right skill sets to keep the jobs here in the UK. So, so this is a, a really important sector. And you'll see there the sort of the bottling plants, food, and also the, the automotive industry in terms of manufacturing is quite significant. Now, civil engineering. Any thoughts what I mean by civil engineering? This is, this is a, quite, something that sometimes people don't understand. Yeah, go for it. 
Perfect, yeah, absolutely. The buildings, the bridges, all of the great big infrastructure pieces. And can anyone think of a, a massive infrastructure piece that's going on in the UK at the moment? Somebody said it over there, HS2, absolutely. We've got all sorts of projects that are massive projects within the UK. The industry really, really needs to pull through the people with all those skills and, and that expertise. So again, this is a, a real growth sector here in the UK. And um, yeah, a few examples there. Clearly, the London Eye was a, was a, was a massive project and, and, and really good. And still there, beyond its originally anticipated life because it's so popular. You know, there are so many fantastic examples of significant buildings in London. And we continue to grow that market. You know, we've had the Shard open, and, and that was cutting-edge design. And once again, within the civil sector, you can do the hands-on stuff, you can do the design stuff, you can do the project management. There really are so many opportunities. Um, electrical and electronic, the, the gentleman there talked about the, the electrical side at the start. And, and once again, can you, can you think about perhaps some of the, the wider implications of electronic and electrical engineering that we, we wouldn't necessarily consider? And you know, music industry, massive in this country. And of course, there are electrical engineers involved in that. Um, clearly, power distribution is huge. And as I'm sure you'll have read in the papers, we're starting to import more power. However, we, we do have the, the great new power projects going on to, to build our self-sufficiency back in, um, in terms of the, the nuclear power stations and the like. But this is really a sector that I think um, is suffering at the moment in terms of skill shortages too. So once again, if there's anything in this broad spectrum that interests any of you, it's really worth looking into. And you can go from the hands-on piece to the design to the project management. I think I've probably said that enough times now, but just to really give you the idea that we are not necessarily all hands-on, we're not necessarily having to be the clever strategic thinkers. There's, there's a whole plethora of stages in between where you can sit at and you can pick your career to be. Okay, now systems engineering. Now this is something that probably many of you would not have necessarily considered or even thought about. And this is where we stitch various components together to make an entire system. And, and I guess one of the, the biggest systems that we have that everybody uses multiple times a day is, is the internet. You know, that's a system in itself. But, um, but there are broader systems. It's not just the internet. There, there's the whole space sector and the linking up in there. And, and this, uh, this graphic you see here, this is like a military system. So, so where we have guys deployed out, deployed out in Afghanistan and the like, it's the connectivity that allows all, all of that capability to come through from the intelligence, from finding the target, from then showing, showing somebody what the target is and getting the recognition that we ought to go after that target and then linking it all the way back to the guys on the ground to either intercept that target or maybe, you know, bomb or whatever, release the missile. So, you know, th these systems are very complex systems and it's a whole slice of engineering in itself in terms of being able to integrate those systems. So, how do you get into engineering? There are several routes, but the most important, significant thing that I'm going to say today to all the mums and dads and, and the, you know, the, the students and the kids, and especially if you have younger children that you want to go back and talk to, it's stick with some form of the STEM subjects. So science, technology, engineering, and maths. I cannot stress that enough. You need to be sticking with those subjects to then keep your options open for the future. Because if you choose to drop those subjects, then it's really difficult to pick them up again and to then go on into um, a technical career with only an art, sort of English, languages, etc. basis in terms of your core education is quite tricky. However, the other way around, if you've continued with STEM subjects and then want to move over to the arts, you can do that. So you really do narrow your choices down if you don't stick with STEM subjects at core points. Uh, and I'm talking GCSE level really here. Um, if you then want to go on and go into the, uh, the more theoretical, up through a degree, maybe move into the management side of engineering, then absolutely you need to get those core A levels and potentially a degree. But th there are various stages in between that. You can do your apprenticeship, so you can go straight from school into an apprenticeship scheme. And if you look around the skill shows today, there are tens of stands with apprenticeship schemes, people trying to draw you in to talk about how to, to learn and to get a wage at the same time. You know, it really is a great scheme. And that is generally more of a hands-on approach, so going into the hands-on engineering. But there are some management apprenticeship schemes as well. So it's worth having a look, a look around and speaking to various companies to see what they have. Um, 
you can do a sort of a hybrid, so you could do a, a, a part-time course, so go to university, do part of a degree, but also do a sandwich degree, so you get maybe a year out with a particular company in industry, and that will give you a bit of a hybrid approach, uh, which some people like, because you get a bit of money, but you also get a, a solid degree. Um, other companies will take you on and support you through the degree process. And so those management apprenticeship schemes I talked about, they might put you through a degree whilst, whilst you're training and learning on the job. So there really, really are so many doors open to you. If you really aren't quite sure what you want to do just yet, but you think you want it to be engineering, you, know, you, can, you can do your own engineering training, go to university, go to college, um, get a degree or some form of uh, further education qualification in engineering and then decide afterwards. So you don't have to align yourself to a company or a particular skill set or a particular um, fraternity of engineering just yet. And do bear in mind what I previously said about these skills being really transferable because you know, the fundamental principles of engineering are just that fundamental principles. So if you start off and you're doing electrical engineering and actually you then decide you want to go into mechatronics, absolutely you could do that. Okay, so I asked this question right at the beginning of my talk, what's an engineer? Um, hopefully you now have a better or broader understanding. Some of you may well have known already. I'm really hoping that I've perhaps sparked a couple of thoughts today. And um, I think for me, an engineer, is all these things. And I cannot express enough how amazing, you know, my career, I've loved it. Every engineer that I speak to has loved their career. And they just, you know, they, they want to do it and they want to tell everybody about it. So please, please, please do speak to anybody you see who's doing something you think you might want to have a go at or you think you might be interested in and ask them loads of questions because they would love to tell you all about what they do, how they do it and what it could mean for you. And the last point I put up there gets rewarded. The pay in this sector is really good. So you could do an awful lot worse than choosing to be an engineer as a career. So could it be you? Um, I'll gladly take any questions now. So any questions, I can pass the mic to you as well. Stunned silence. <laughs> Dumbfounded. Oh, yeah, we have a question here. I just want to ask you to elaborate on the uh, point you made about transferable skills. And if you do, say, electronic engineering, I'm surprised that you're saying that, that you, know, that you can go into mechanical or other types of engineering without too much difficulty. And, and so for me, it's about having a technical understanding. So, so if, I, if I take myself as the example, because I, clearly that's what I know about, um, although I studied mechanical engineering as a degree, in the, in the RAF, I then had the um, sort of on-the-job training in terms of aeronautical, and I had you know, electrical elements in the aircraft as well as avionic elements. Uh, so you get a brief overview of the particular aircraft type, and you have, because you have that technical mindset, you're able to take on that information far more readily than somebody who doesn't have a technical background. So although I'm not a fully qualified electrical engineer, I make engineering and technical judgments and decisions about electronic components. A, a great example is at Gatwick Airport, where I was in charge of the high voltage infrastructure, and I was you know, making safety judgment calls on it because of the, the level of attainment I've reached in engineering, not specifically in electrical engineering. But the, the thing that I would say is, that as an engineering manager, I have a team of experts underneath me. So it's just having that technical skill set to be able to take their advice, make a judgment about what they're telling you, and then make a decision. So I wouldn't go and fix the high voltage infrastructure for sure, but I will absolutely make decisions about it in terms of safety and compliance. 